Hello and welcome. Please take a moment, pause the video, and try this problem on your own. Let's start by reading this problem together, and I will say the wording of this problem I do find to be particularly confusing. Um, but we'll, we'll break it down. So Edith, ba Edith babysits for X hours a week uh, after school at a job that pays $4 an hour. Alright, so that's one job here, babysitting X hours for $4 an hour. She has accepted another job that pays $8 an hour as a library assistant working Y hours a week. So that's where I think this is a little confusing because we have two different variables for hours. And it's a little difficult to think about. She will work at both jobs. She's able to work no more than 15 hours a week. So first of all, uh, let's say X is the number of hours of the babysitter, uh, babysitting, and Y is the number of hours, number of hours at the library. We know the sum of those two can be no more; has to be less than or equal to 15 hours a week uh, due to school commitments. Edith wants to earn at least $80 per week, so. Um, you know, she's going to have to think about what combination of hours should she work at both jobs. I mean, of course, the obvious thing here is to work the most at the library because it pays more. But let's say it's $4 per hour at babysitting, $8 at the library, add them together. And this amount, you have to think about this, has to be at least 80, so more than or equal to 80. That's our system of equations. Now, they want us to graph these two things. All right, so for me, um, to graph these, I would first of all, right, I would like to rewrite them in mx plus b format. So I want to get y all by itself, subtract x from both sides, y is 15 minus x. And then our second equation, we'll use orange, right? It, we want to subtract x from both sides. So 8y is greater than or equal to 80 minus 4x, and then divide both sides by 8 and y is greater than or equal to 10 minus 1 half x. Right, or 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. All right, so our two equations, right, here and here uh, are easier to graph for me in mx plus b format because we now know our y-intercepts, 15 and 10, and our slopes, negative 1 and negative 1 half. So let's plot the pink one first here. Here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then our slope is down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. We're going to keep going with these points. I'm going to keep plotting because unless I actually have a ruler in my hand, I have a hard time lining these things up. Right. Okay. So that's our... This is our first line. All right. And then I like to label them. Uh, so this means y is less than or equal to it. Remember, so it's shade below. Now when you shade, it's usually a good idea to shade somewhat like I'm doing, although hopefully a little bit neater. The shade lines you draw, don't color them in entirely. That would be make the answer difficult to read. You want to shade kind of perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to your line. So this is y is less than or equal to 15 minus x. Now the next one, the orange, we start at 10, right? And our slope is um, down uh, minus 1 half. Right or down one over two, so down one up two, down one up two, down one up two, and so forth. Down one up two, here they intersect. Down one up two, down one up two, down one up two. Keep going. All right, and then I get my line tool, or in your case, a ruler. And okay, connect the dots. Boom. And here, y is greater than or equal to ten minus one half x, so we shade above. Like this. I should have used a line tool here. In fact, I will use my line tool because it's looking pretty awful. There we go. Now, this is the shaded region, right? Your shading is an inequality, everything above the line. And actually, my shape, my shading technique didn't really help us here. Usually, they have one shade above and below in a way that they can cross, but here it's a little bit harder to read. Okay. Uh, and I mean, this is shading the whole thing, really, right? You just keep shading. Um, but they want, if we look at the answer here, one combination of hours that will allow Edith to earn at least 80 per week and working no more than 15 hours. So, um, in other words, they want a point that has a solution to both inequalities. So that's anything here where the two meet. So I'll pick one that's easy for me to read. Uh, this point strikes me as easy to read. Um, 
So what is that point? These are one, so one, two, three, and then up 10. So the point I found is the point three for x and 10 for y. Now, this is a tough question, and it's very easy to make mistakes. Take this point and plug it into your original system to make sure that your answer actually fits the context of the situation. Because if you're like me, you often rush and make mistakes, right? So here, let's just make sure this works. So x is 3. We'll apply it here first. And y is 10. So 3 plus 10 is less than or equal to 15. Check. It works. And then the second scenario, we plug in 3 and 10. So we have 4 times 3 plus 8 times 10. Is that greater than or equal to 80? I think so, right? Because this is 80. That's 12, so 92. It's greater than equal. So she made $92 and worked less than 15 hours. Fantastic. She worked 13 hours. Um, I think my problem with this question is, um, I mean, depending on these jobs, maybe she really loves the babysitting, but I think it's pretty, you know, easy to say, work as many hours at the library as you can, maybe she can't, uh, to maximize the amount of income you would be getting here. Um, but that's just me. All right, hope this helped.